In this video, I'm going to show you how you can extract dimensional data off your 3D models. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go under our annotation tab, and you'll see our measurement tool resides. So we'll click that, and you'll also notice our property browser, excuse me, converts to the measurement tool. And you have your various measurement options here. You have linear, horizontal, vertical, angular, radial. In addition to those, we have what we call the curve measurement tool and a face measurement tool. And I'll get to these in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. The key thing to note here is that these same tools also reside up here. And so many users may get confused as to why that is. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now. When you're in the measurement tool, these measurement tools are exactly that that's all they do they they just allow you to take measurements off your model they're temporary once you're done extracting your dimensional data off your model and you commit to the command or exit they're gone they get erased forever they don't exist no longer in the scene okay if you come up to these here these are actually 3d smart dimensions um, you can use them to pull measurements off your model but they also have a multi, a multi, um, a multitude, I should say, of abilities. They're a little bit schizophrenic. What you can do is, if you take a horizontal dimension and you you pull a you know a measurement off it, that's fine. Once you commit to it, it remains in the scene. That dimension will physically stay in the scene. And at a later date, you may want that dimension to be a, a three D constraint, so you can convert it to a three D constraint. You can also use these smart dimensions to position parts relative to each other as well. So you do see that there is an added benefit to these um, smart dimensions. These are just strictly 2D, well, I shouldn't say 2D, strictly measurement tools off here. All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and just give you the pick selection pick methods available to you for getting these dimensions. Um, how you can do it, we're in the linear right now, is you can get dimensions from face to face. You can get dimensions from point to face. You can get measurements from point to point. Let's pick point to point. You can get measurements from a point to an edge. By the way, you can drag these out if you have to. You can get a measurement strictly by picking an edge. It's by itself. Or you can get a measurement by going edge to edge. But that will only work on circular edges. For instance, if you pick a circle here and here. And then you'll get the center lines. Okay. I'm going to exit out to clear this out. You'll notice every... All the dimensions are gone. Let's go back in. Uh, I'm going to turn my perspective off, and I'm going to look directly at this part here. If I do a linear from edge to edge, you'll get the center line to center line at that edge. But you'll notice you get some control now with your measurements. You can, let's say, want the minimum distance between the two circular edges, so you can go on the first pick point and select minimum. You notice the measurement goes to the outside or the tangency of this edge. And if you do the same for the other one, now you have the minimum distance between those two holes. You can also do the opposite and do the maximum for both. Now you have the maximum distance. Or you can mix and match whatever suits you need. Let's just say OK. You notice the dimension gets erased. Go back in. You get the same abilities with the min-max on your, your orthogonals, too. So if we go from center to center, you notice we got the same controls here. We can get the minimums, maximum, minimum here, and so on and so forth. Okay. Exit out of here. I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll go back into the tool. If we go to our curve measurement tool, what this allows us to do is pick um, any edge on 
any model, and it doesn't have to be a straight edge. It could be a B spline. It doesn't really matter. Circular. It doesn't matter. So if we click this tool and we pick an edge, it gives us the actual length here. Okay. The nice thing with this tool is if you hold the shift key and select multiple edges, you'll see it starts adding up all the combined lengths. So in this case, this linear length of this, all these uh, edges together is over 21 inches. Okay. Let's escape out of here, turn that off. And the same syntax basically applies for faces. So if you pick a a face, what, instead of getting linear inches, obviously we're getting a surface area, square inches. And if you hold the shift key down again and pick multiple, you'll get the combined surface areas of, of all that. Okay. And just to reinforce what the 3D measurement tools are, if we do the same thing and I pick, let's say, this gray part from the point to the bottom face here, pull this out okay I exit the command you do see that it exists and let's say we want that to become a 3d constraint we can just right click on it oh. I highlight the part first I'll just right click on it and lock it we get a little tick mark next to here let's see if you can see that a little bit easier there we go little tick mark indicating that is now a constraint which I can now, I cannot use my try ball in any way to move that part. And you can unlock it at any time, or you can right click on it, double click on it, and edit it. And now you're using it as a positioning tool. It's actually a dual purpose at this point because we use it as a positioning tool and a constraint tool. So that's the difference between our smart dimensions and the measurement tool. I hope you find this useful and uh, happy RE kit.